Okay, sense of Mick Jagger dancing in silver bodysuit or jumpsuit with this pattern, like coins on fabric or fabric brocade, sparkly silver, maybe a red cape. So, something to do with this fabric that Brooke had, a sense of coins, silver coins, the silver jumpsuit, Mick Jagger dancing. Um, there seems to be a link being made between Mick Jagger and finance. Song, Cisco Kid. Talking about Joanna, I see a female reproductive system. That's my cousin. Idea of interface, like Photoshop. So the square is like a work area, and then this is a drop-down selector. So the drop-down selector, that button on the drop-down selector becomes a TV set, and I see the Chanel logo in the TV set. So by drop-down selector, I think this has to do with sabotaging people, maybe even murdering people, maybe linked to finance, maybe linked to Chanel. Prelinger Archive. I can't read the last word, but um, Prelinger Archive is a San Francisco-based ba archive. Sense of double neck guitar facing backwards. And then I get eat the salted peanuts out the can. So the double neck guitar is a, there's a double neck guitar that Chris bought. It's probably a link to twins. I think he bought it. It's possible someone bought it for him though. Twelve twenty-one p.m. Big emergency room bill. Mostly, all I did was sit in the emergency room and wait. Sense of hospitals linked to pain. Mike Payne and the word pain is in pain. P-A-I-N. Stasis. All right, being kept still. Financial shakedown. I get the phrase. This is going to happen. American Airlines and plows forward. Link to Willie, my daughter's father, crashing into a pole in Arcata. So this is when we moved together to this apartment in Arcata near the Sunset District of Arcata, which I now know is linked to um, an area where Willie's um, grandfather, paternal grandfather probably lived, great-grandfather. So that Willie, so what, what happened was there was a garage underneath um, our apartment and it, there were these poles and Willie somehow backed into one of these poles and it cracked, the entire pole cracked. So this is linking that incident possibly to Disney. So that's mind control, right? So what I think what that means is Disney paid somebody to do this. You know, then make Willie space out and forget where the pole was. And by the way, my daughter, last time I talked to my daughter, she had damage on her car, and she had also backed into a pole. But, you know, she's a young driver. In Willie's case, he wasn't. Okay, this is important. I get the phrase, this is important. Between the years 1725 and 1735, our nations brought forth. And then it ends. And it seems like it was really important, like it was repeated until I got it down. Between the years 1725 and 1735, our nations brought forth. Um, and then this kind of reminds me of that song. In the year 2525, that's Okay, satin skirt. Madonna, material girl, something on TV linked to Joanna Perkins, and Joanna Hansen Perkins. So we had silver metallic fabric. Now we have a satin skirt linked to Madonna material girl. And then I get the phrase Brooke at Coachella, Brooke at Burning Man, maybe also, definitely Coachella, probably both. So my daughter's never been to either of those places. Um, 
maybe someone's going to try to get her to go to one of those places. Maybe they're just trafficking her through. I think these meet-up places are trafficking hubs. So the Gilroy Garlic Festival, Coachella, all those kinds of places. It's places for people to meet and traffic illicit mater surveillance materials without having to use, you know, electronic means where they might presumably get caught. Um, so I guess what the deal is is that there's some type of restrictions on what they can traffic, but there's all kinds of ways to subvert those restrictions. So I get the sense of that police mural on 47th and East Burnside, and the, particularly the picture of the dog with a jet pack being linked to my cousin Joanna, who is a doctor. The dog with the jet pack appears to be flying, I think in that mural, it's kind of flying over a couple of doctors talking in front of solar panels. Red baseball cap linked to 1987 dreams um, having to do with Susie Brusca. Um, my brother was playing baseball back then. I think there's something to do with that. It might be the Humboldt Crabs baseball team. So it might not have been specifically about Gary, but about this baseball. And then this next set of dreams is interesting because... Um, well, first I get... Now, I'm in a lot of pain at this point. I'm having a really hard time. I know I need to write these things down, but I'm having an extremely hard time doing it because of the pain. The level of pain is so intense. Um, vertical lines is all I can read from this. Image of broken wires at 9.47 p.m. And then I see an image of many close-together horizontal lines. Then I see an image of cloth with lines, white cloth, dark blue lines like navy blue or almost black. They maybe shift color. So this last one was 947. Nine, what was it? it was about 947, and this is like right after, so I figured it was about 950. I noticed there's a um, there's this um, bot called Architelect, Architelect, or something like that, that posts pictures it finds on Tumblr. It's supposed to be a bot, but more than once I've had stuff that it posts be linked to dreams and visions that I had. In this case, I happened to see this morning at 10, 11 p.m., I believe it was. It posted an image of cloth. It was actually a person wearing a dress, but you couldn't really see the person. All you could see was this piled up cloth. It looked just like in my dream. I didn't draw it very well here because, once again, I was in severe pain. But Architelect posted the image from my dream shortly after I had the dream. I cannot explain how that happens. It's not the only time I've seen stuff like that, but um, what is going on, it's not, it's not clear to me what's going on. Because um, I don't know exactly how Architelect chooses things, how it posts, does it schedule posts, posts. Is it really only a bot? I don't know. Disc with number three on it looks like a CD. Shifts into the Chuck Taylor logo on shoes. So it kind of like the CD kind of just flies into somebody's shoe to really match this Chuck Taylor logo. Um, the thing about this so clearly the music industry is terrified of us, you know, music industry, generally speaking, not everybody, but terrified of us coming out of this situation because they've done so much intellectual property theft um, and also blacklisting. But Chuck Taylor is another sort of situation where um, Chris has worn these shoes his whole life. Um, the black and white Chuck Taylors, and it's become a fashion statement both with punk and hip-hop artists. So that's I think that's what it is. It's the idea of musicians like punk, punk rockers and hip-hop artists wearing these Chuck Taylor shoes. Maybe something else is behind this, right? Maybe Chuck Taylor is actually paying people. 
maybe Chuck Taylor is pulling some kind of strings behind the scenes. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And in fact, especially now, because guess what? They're owned by Nike, and I know Nike pulls strings. So, um, right now, Chuck Taylor is a subsidiary of Nike. It wasn't always that way, but it is now. So, I, I mean, and I think I joked at one point that Chuck Taylor should give Chris some royalties for, um, you know, since we're under surveillance and um, he's been wearing his shoes the whole time. Wearing, wearing those shoes. <sighs> Regarding defund the police on TV. A vision that the United States should put two officers on the street corner, on street corners around town and make their roles assistants. Now, while I'm, while I'm sort of translating this into the I read pan, I get a song in my head, and that's this one. I can't remember the name. Maybe it is Suzanne Vega. I don't, I don't really don't know. Let's do, 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 on this thing called an earthquake table where they shake a model of a larger building to see where the weak spots are. Um, I know that the Loma Prieta, I think that was what it was called, the 1989 San Francisco earthquake, somebody knew that that earthquake was going to happen, so it appears to me it had been a manufactured earthquake. Um, Loma Prieto was a manufactured earthquake, and um, the I I don't remember eighty five. I can't remember the right name. The, the bridge collapse in Minneapolis in the nineties was a manufactured event. Something about a bug, someone stepping into my density. I don't know what that word is. Coronavirus peak. This riddle word, riddle word noise behind me. Um, one thing I'm concerned about is people entering my apartment, right, to try to make us sick or do something bad. And, um, The fact that they've been taking my journals, they continue to take my journals too, and is really upsetting. Idea of a guitar neck as a tree. So I think this is links to timber um, money. So if it's a guitar neck, the neck is a, it means your vulnerable point, right? So I think what this is showing is a link between timber finance and progress in the music industry. So right now I have in my head a vision of a bullet. The bullet that came into my window in 1987 when Mike was out doing something. Um, I think this is specifically the sub-pop bands. Possibly. Shakespeare's True Sorrow I should look this up because I've never heard this phrase before, but it came out like it, like that. Paired with the image of Southern Oregon or Northern California beach, like I'm calling it the arches, but I, I realize now it's called Arch Cape and it's actually the Northern Oregon coast. I noticed that there's a lot of glyphs along 101 around Arch Cape. So now, after this, right, I've the pain medication's finally kicking in, right? I'm starting to feel better. 7, 11 a.m., Washington Monument, reflecting pool. Looks like a grave marker obelisk. The Washington Monument also has twin markings in the form of those lights, right? The two lights that are supposed to be signaling to airplanes with their twin markings. Sense of pain. 
So the idea of pain, the name, and pain, the feeling of pain all night, I think, since Mike Payne is ultimately behind this disaster, which I mean, by disaster, I mean the medical attacks, the back pain, the whole situation. Um, the situation is clearly older than Mike Payne, but he's been given a lot of power, obviously. And I think he's doing a lot of the coordinating, the finance, and so forth. 7, 16 a.m. Idea of Brooke going camping with these two people she barely knows. She calls me from the campsite. So camping, in my dreams, seems to be linked to um, being in a concentration camp. I'm concerned, though, that there might be... I keep getting this sense of Brooke being lured out into some remote area and something bad happening, being planned for her in some remote area, like lured to a home in the woods, lured into going camping in a situation where there might be a flash flood. She had all these dreams saying that there was going to be this flood that kills her whole family. She doesn't remember those dreams, but I remember her telling me about them over and over and over. It kills her and her whole family. So they're try probably trying to make this come true. I mean, there's all kinds of different... The, the flooding, the idea of being lured out into a place, the idea of her possibly running into a gun situation, all of these keep coming up. This is, you know, and so this is right after Mike Payne being behind this. Mike Payne is an evil motherfucker. He really has a nice veneer. The last time I talked to him, he still had that freaking veneer on. Very charming veneer. He's evil as hell.